morning. Good morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements. If you see any dirt or dust around, uh, they were working on the roof this week, and they did finish shingling the roof. Uh, they started on Tuesday, finished uh, Friday afternoon. Um, we still have the gutters uh, that they're looking into, and the parsonage and parsonage garage will be done probably sometime this week. Uh, Sunday school, uh, as soon as the announcements are done, they can be dismissed to uh, the Sunday school, the kids. Uh, fellowship, there will be fellowship after church uh, downstairs. And the last thing I have is Steve Prusin, uh has something to say regarding the search committee. Thanks, Dale. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, Thank you so much for your patience, and it is with great joy that the search committee comes before you. Uh, I'd like to just mention who they are. They're Dave Schaffner, Karen Peeler, Sandy Wunderlich, Laura Manson, Carolee Wiscala, and myself. Uh, after many hours of interrogation, if you will, and uh, homework, um, we have found an individual that we feel would meet not only our needs, uh, but Cochran's as well, and as you are aware, uh, Cochran and St. John's are now one church together, uh, keeping their individual uh, practices and uh, <coughs> policies, if you will. Um, so it was sort of a challenge because we wanted to be agreeable to everyone. At any rate, uh, the group has uh, uh, graciously uh, accepted uh, Pastor Deb Kunkel uh, from Sanibel, Florida uh, will be our new pastor in the very near future. Uh, at this point, there are a number of issues that need to be uh, gone through by both consistories. This is the first time that we've had to consult somebody other than just our, our own people. Uh, so it's going to be a little more intense. Uh, I shouldn't say intense, but uh, just a little more involved because uh, we need to, to satisfy both uh, consistories, ours and Cochran's, which I'm sure is not going to be a problem. It's just a matter of going through it. Uh, there will be a couple of financial issues that we will need to address uh, regarding the parsonage, and uh, that I'm sure can be worked out uh, in the very near future. So, uh, again, uh, all of the expectations that our uh, two search committees and churches that have put together, uh, we feel uh, are being met, and therefore at this time um, we are uh, very, very excitedly looking forward to finishing up our negotiations. We have a meeting on Monday night uh, with our um, church and Cochrane Church and the presidents, which Dale is for representing us, uh, and we will be going through a number of these issues. Uh, and so, again, it's with joy that I that I bring this to you. Uh, I guess you've all been very patient, and I ask for just a little while longer uh, until we can get this uh, matter uh, taken care of here. Uh, Pastor Deb uh, assures me that uh, the cold weather is going to be a big thing for her. So uh, after living in San Diego, Florida, if you know where that is, why well, it's pretty nice down there. Um, over the winter months. So she tells me that she's looking forward to uh, to being part of our communities uh, up here. So uh, at this point, I'm not going to say anything more until everything is all uh, uh, taken care of by the two ruling bodies here of our churches. Uh, and there will be a formal uh, letter sent out with all of her uh, background, uh, both educational and uh, parishioner-wise. and. Uh, we will have at that point also a date for her uh, trial sermon, uh, after which the congregation uh, will vote as to whether accept or reject her. So, <clears throat> again, thank you so much for your patience, and uh, we will be letting you know as things uh, develop. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.
minister at, a, at St. John's and a friend of all, um, Reverend George Shawal. Good morning. Good morning. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, indeed, I am. Reverend George Schwarzer. Hard to believe that it's been over 60 years since I had the opportunity to serve you as your pastor and leader here. But it's sure nice to be back. I bring readings from Pilgrim, United Church of Christ, in Grafton, Wisconsin, where I'm attending. And also greetings from our pastor, Ashley Nolte, who is serving me as a parishioner. And I'm happy to sit in the pew and be part of the congregation, as well as being a pastor of year. Having served this congregation at one time, uh, it's always good to come back. In part because we have family here, but even our children have lots of fond, fond memories of St. John's and Fountain City. And one time we quizzed them, said, what would you call home after all these moves we've made through the years in this Fountain City? And I think I would agree with that. Our service this morning will focus on hymns, scriptures, and songs. As far as its format has been inspired by a vision that Isaiah had about 7,000 B.C. Isaiah was in a temple and he experienced the presence of God. And he said, Just a I don't have it memorized. Not yet. It wasn't a year that King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord. He was sitting high on the throne, exalted, and his robe was filled with the whole temple. Among them were flaming creatures. Each one of them had six wings. Each creature covered its face with two wings, and its body with two, and used the other two for flying. They were calling out to each other, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty is holy. The sounds of their voices made the foundations of the temple shake, and the temple itself became filled with smoke. And I said, There is no hope for me. I am doomed, because Every word that passes my lips is sinful. And I live among my people who are sinful. And yet, with my own eyes, I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one creature flew down to me with a burning coal, touched my lips, and said, This has touched your lips. Your sin is now gone. Then I heard the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Who will be my messenger? And then I said, I will go. Send me. And so the hymns, scriptures, that we use today kind of fulfill that pattern of adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and ultimately commissioning to go. And why not use him to worship in this fashion? It was the Psalms themselves are considered by most as being hymns of the ancient people. In Acts, we read that Paul and Silas sang hymns while he was in prison. The early church was encouraged to sing hymns and spiritual songs and praise to God. An Advent song that you perhaps sing at Advent time 
Have your father's love forgotten? Begotten? Comes in about the fourth century. And many other hymns in your hymnal have been probably written somewhere in the 17th, 18th, 19th century. In every generation, there has been music and always something new. So even to this very day, people sing God's praise in one fashion or another. So I hope you can worship with me in this fashion. I happen to be one who likes to sing, and, uh, and at the times I worship here, I know you are a singing congregation with beautiful accompaniment, and I'm sure together we can lift our praises to God in joyful song. We begin with these words this morning from Psalm 95. Come, let us praise the Lord. Let us sing for joy to the God who protects us. Let us come before him with thanksgiving. Let us sing joyful songs of praise. Please join in singing hymn number 55, verses 1 to 3.
with our spirits lifted, let us continue, joyful, joyful, we adore you. Just out of the words. God, you are giving and forgiving. As I say, I proclaim it, I am a sinful person. So, to come to the next hymn, just as I am. But as we look in that sense, once again, I'm reminded you of the words of a song. Be merciful to me, O God, because of your constant love, because of your great mercy, wipe away my sin, wash away all my evil, and make me clean from my sin. I recognize my faults. I am always conscious of my sin. I have sinned against you only and only against you and done what is considered evil. So you are right in judging me. Sincerity and truth are what you desire and require. Fill my mind with your wisdom because of my sin and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let the true let me hear the sound of the joy and sadness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right and loyal spirit within me. Now let us sing, just as I am.
Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, we find these words. When anyone is joined to Christ, he is a new beginning. The old is gone. Thanks be to God. Let us sing our praise. Amazing grace.
I believe we are now ready to hear from the promises of God. The next section of Psalms, hymns, will remind us how precious God is to us, and what God has done for us, and what God expects of us. We begin with his eyes on the sparrow. <coughs> Remembering Jesus said, even we are worth more than a sparrow. Let us sing.
as a church, as a Christian community, we always look to the cross as being our unifying sign, symbol, the memory of that cross is at the apex of our faith. And so I'd like you to sing with me on a hill far away.
break. <laughs> I chose some of these hymns because they're old and familiar. Thinking back, that this one's one that has been with us since the early 1900s. And something we still sing today, at least I do, of course, I don't believe others, but uh, it's an oldie that expresses very well parts of our faith in God. The next one is another old favorite. And I know that people are never happier than they can sing in the garden. Uh, and uh, I have fond memories every time I hear that people sing in two part harmony uh, because it's become so popular for them. So let's take a wing at in the garden. Oh, the other thing I want to mention about that, do you realize that that song is, could really be talking about Mary, who was the first visitor in the garden. Early in the morning, while the dew was still on the roses, that's when Mary was going to the dew. And it was a woman, by all means, who was the first to recognize the risen Christ. If we don't want to give much emphasis, emphasis to women today, just think of it. It was Mary who was the first to visit the tomb and their experience the risen Christ. And so as you think of Mary as you sing the song, which comes to the garden, looking for the Savior, and she found him. It was later the disciples ultimately experienced him. So let us come to the garden this morning. Pause now for a time of prayer. Psalm 46 reminds us God is our refuge and strength, always ready in the time of trouble. And he ends in that psalm by saying, Be still and know that I am God. And in the New Testament, it is Jesus who reminds us to watch and pray. Let's sing together. Be still, my soul.
words, verses to you as the musicians play in the background. I'll read verses two and three from Psalm.
another contemporary hymn, chorus, whatever you want to call it, reminds you that you can pray anytime, anywhere, no matter what. So, whisper a prayer for everything you need to get in touch with God. Let us pray. Ever gracious, loving God, we are so grateful for this day, this place of worship. People, past and present, who help to celebrate God in a setting such as this, are grateful to God. We remember this day, many for whom we carry concern. We think of our children and teachers and educators who have gone back to work on our behalf, on our behalf. We are reminded of those for whom life is hard, especially those who have been affected by hurricanes and earthquakes. We think again and again of those who are in the military forces, men and women, in many areas in the country. We pray for the safety of all those the medical professions, their families. They try their best to serve humanity. We pray for our police and military workers. We pray for those who are doing their best to recover from COVID-19 and all those who found themselves intimately caring for them. Or mindful of those who struggle with mental diseases. We're mindful of members, friends, who are homebound, those from our congregation who cannot be with us this day because of physical disabilities. And how happy we are for those who can find home in assisted living facilities. We're mindful of the health you have provided us. And now, Hear the prayer. If everyone gathered here this day, and we silently pray.
this day our prayer is offered in the name of him who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. One day the ancient proverb said, Be generous and share your food with the poor, and you will be blessed. And likewise, in Paul's second letter to Corinthians, he says, Remember that the person who plants few seeds will have a small crop. The one who plants many seeds will have a large crop. Each one should give as he has decided, not out of regret or duty. God loves the one who gives gladly. And God will always give you more than you need. The next hymn it's probably not familiar to many of you, but its message is wonderful. So we will hear our Ruth give us an introduction to it. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, let me, get, let me do this first. Let me read uh, the words. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you gave prove your love for me. Voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am, I never hoped to be, I owe it all to you. To God, to glory, to God, be the glory of the things you have done. Let's hear it. I'm going to take you off right this time also. Give us a move.
Isaiah's vision is it? With the call. Who will go? And Isaiah said, Send me. The last two hymns are hymns of challenge. Challenge. First, renew the church. Thank you. 
our words of Numbers, chapter 6. May God bless you and take care of you. May God be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I appreciate this opportunity to have been with you this morning. The voices have been pushed, I'm sure. But remember the words that you have sung, the scriptures that gave them birth. And by I suggest that you find yourself on a Sunday morning when there is no clergy available, get out the old clothing and you can once again worship in song and scripture. So we leave with the words, God be with you.